right, so we're back here continuing to talk about pipe flow. And in the last video, we did this somewhat long derivation, but I think it's very useful to tie together this idea of predicting the velocity field using the Navier-Stokes equations, which is a momentum balance, and trying to come up with something that we can use for a practical engineering problem eventually. So we have now an equation here for the velocity at different points here given the pressure gradient delta p over l and the viscosity of the fluid and then the diameter of the pipe so this will tell us the velocity at different points and just by inspection here if this equation remember r is our variable the other things are constants when r gets to d over 2 this goes to 0 and then at r equals 0 it's going to have some maximum value there at the middle so it's going to be like a a parabola so the velocity profile is parabolic for um, laminar flow inside of a pipe and so now we want to take that one remember our goal is to get to this friction factor that we can use okay so we're doing all this work for a reason and so um, let's continue we have to do some more work here uh, and so we want to get the average value so what we need to be able to talk about is the flow rate and the average velocity because it's not really practical to measure the velocity at different points in a pipe what we really want to know is how much flow we get out so if you think about a pipe if we look at it from the side uh, we know that you know we, we're going out in the r direction that there's some if we make a little slice in here and it has some thickness dr okay that so if I want to come up with the flow rate basically I have to look at the velocity is changing at every point here going from the middle to the outside so if I want to get the total amount of flow since the velocity is changing I have to do an integral so the velocity at this point r is vr so I have v of r at that point and then the area of that little strip at that distance r is going to be 2 pi r which is the uh, circumference of this little circle times its thickness dr so we have uh, da like the area of this little thing is going to be 2 pi r dr and then our uh, dq the flow rate through that little piece is going to be equal to um, v times da and so V, we said from our last exercise, was delta P over 4 mu L D squared over 4 minus R squared. Okay, so that's V, and then DA is 2 pi R DR. And so now if I integrate this from R equals 0 to D over 2, the outside, 0 to d over 2 then I can get that will give me the total flow all the way across the whole thing so integral from r is 0 to d over 2 of this whole thing uh, is going to give me q so therefore q is going to be if you look here I can put the the delta p mu l and d are all constants remember so I'm going to take the two and divide that there and I'm going to have a pi and then I'm going to have a delta P and L so I've got pi delta P pi delta P 2 mu L 2 mu L outside and then I'm going to distribute this integral to the two different terms so I have to keep my R here remember so I've got integral from 0 to D over 2 of d squared over 4r dr so that's this one and then minus integral from 0 to d over 2 of r cubed dr all right so i've got two different integrals i have to do and then i have to subtract them and do this um I have this other term left there i should probably double check that i there's a lot of steps here it's very easy to make a mistake so yeah del pi delta p over 2 mu l 0 to 2 d squared over r and okay so this looks right <clears throat> and so then pi delta p 
over to mu L and this guy, remember the d squared over 4 is a constant. This is going to become r squared over 2. And then I put d over 2 in that. That's going to give me d squared over, um, let's see, d, d squared over 4. And then I multiply that by another d squared over 4. It's going to give me d to the 4th over, let's see, d to the fourth over 32 should be 32 there's another two from somewhere and d squared over four so this becomes r squared so d squared over four times four ah, because it's r squared over two right so it's d squared over four and then divided by 2, and then divided by 4. So that's where the 32 comes from. And then this one is r to the 4th. So if I put d in, that becomes d to the 4th over 2 to the 4th, which is over 4. So d to the 4th over 2 to the 4th over the 4 that's from this integral. So that's a 64. Okay, very messy. And so 132nd minus 164th leaves me with a 132nd that I then have to um, multiply by this 2. So, sorry, 132nd minus 164th is 164th, and then times the 2 gives me 128th. So there's limited space here. But d to the 4th over 128 mu L. Okay. Um, again, the, the details aren't... A, you know, it's important to get the final result here, but the steps are, it's just a tedious thing. So uh, anyway, so that gives us the flow rate then. And so I can get the average velocity if I wanted that one from Q over A. And so here I have Q and then A is going to be uh, pi D squared over four. So pi, I'm going to just write this out long form here. Over 128 mu L pi d squared over 4. So I'm writing a is pi d squared with a 4 up there. And so I'm then left with the pi's go away. And I'm left with a delta p. And then d to the fourth becomes d squared. And then 4 into 128 is a 32 and mu and l. And I believe I've got that right. OK, so this is the average velocity here inside the um, inside of the laminar flow field and this is known as the hagen poiseuille equation and this is this whole flow <coughs> distribution that we just described is called uh, poiseuille flow and so thinking back remember our goal is to come up with a friction factor here for the darcy weisbach equation and so we said that um, delta p over gamma that's going to be equal to our head loss is fl over dv squared over 2g and so if i move this gamma over here remember gamma is rho g so the g's cancel and so i'm left with this thing so delta p over l is f rho v squared over 2d so i can combine this equation all that i did all this work for and this is our average velocity here um, remember this is a v average because it's changing. If we combine these two things together, we can then come up with an equation to solve for the friction factor. So over here, I have um, delta P over L. Let's write down one more step. Delta P over L is equal to 32 mu. So delta P over L, 32 mu, and then I move the D squared over. And um, 32 mu, leaving those two, and then times v. OK. Uh, so if I combine these two equations together, I get f rho v squared over 2d. And remember, we're talking about v average here. It's got to be equal to 32 mu v over d squared and one of those v's cancel and so then i get f is equal to if i work that out 
it is 64 mu over rho vd and remember v is v average yeah move that up and get a 64 one of the d's cancels one of the v's cancels so so there's my friction factor and if you look at rho vd and mu does that look familiar hopefully it does remember that is the reynolds number so this whole thing just becomes 64 over the reynolds number so tons of work we had to do but now we've finally done it we have come up with an expression for the friction factor as a function of the Reynolds number it turns out but that's rho VD and mu here it comes again from all this analysis the Reynolds number that's why it's so important for you to understand it um, and so yeah one thing to note about this is how does this depend on the pipe material notice that um, doesn't it doesn't <laughs> depend on pipe material so what the kind of pipe we use doesn't matter when we're looking at laminar flow and why is that one remember before we said that the energy dissipation is between the fluid particles so that's what the really the key idea here is, is where is the momentum going all that's being dissipated between the particles and it doesn't um, and so what's happening at the wall doesn't really matter um, in terms of energy dissipation so our energy losses all come from uh, other particles now that's not the case when we get to turbulent flow which is next okay but so let's do one quick example here so to try to make this um, a little bit more applicable for you so we have water flowing through a thin tubular column with a diameter of one millimeter so D is one millimeter and the length of this is 10 centimeters and we're saying that uh, the flow rate needs to be 20 millimeters cubed per second and so we're supposed to get the the pressure drop through the column okay so the first thing that we're going to need, need to do here is we need to check to see if we're in turbulent or laminar flow because that's going to affect our flow equations and you know hint hint it's going to be laminar because we're, we're looking at laminar here um, so <clears throat> but we need to get the reynolds number and so to get the reynolds number we need um, velocity so V is equal to Q over A, Q over um, pi D squared over 4. So 4 over pi, and our Q here is 20 millimeters cubed per second. And then our diameter is 1 millimeter and squared. And so that is going to be and then I'm going to put that let's sorry let's put that in meters um, per second so I've got 10 to the sixth square millimeters in a square meter and it seems like something is missing there I miss a term ah I need the uh, oh no for, for velocity I, actually I don't need I don't need to do this sorry let's just leave it in millimeters per second that comes out to be 25.4 millimeters per second um, and then the Reynolds number is DV over nu so we're dealing with water again so nu is 10 to the minus sixth meters squared per second like it was in the last example that we did so D is one millimeter um, nu is 10 to the minus sixth meters squared per second and V is 25.4 millimeters per second and yeah now I need to do that conversion of 10 to the sixth millimeters squared per meter squared and that's going to give us 10 to the minus six 10 to the six goes away and there's a one so it's just 25.4 uh, is our Reynolds number so therefore this is well below 2000 so we're in laminar laminar flow all right so now we're laminar flow so that means to get the pressure loss we need the friction factor and so F equals 64 over the Reynolds number for laminar flow and we just got Reynolds number so 64 over 25.4 that comes out to be 2.51 is our friction factor and then we could use the Darcy Weisbach equation now to estimate our um, pressure drop here so delta P over gamma 
uh, or we can get um, yeah so delta P is equal to um, F times Rho V squared over 2d and then times L we need to multiply by right yeah so delta P over L is this and so then I need to move that over so we've got to do a little unit conversion so our F is 2.51 and then we've got I'll put the 2 down there so F and 2 are here uh, density of water it's another property we're going to need here is 1,000 uh, kilograms per cubic meter so 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter velocity we got was 25.4 millimeters per second and that is squared needs to be squared and so we're gonna again need 10 to the 6 millimeters squared and a meter squared okay so we've got F and 2 here, we've got rho, we've got V squared, and we need uh, L and D then. So L we said was 10 centimeters, and the diameter is um, 1 millimeter, which is 0 0.1 centimeters. So those units will cancel. And let's see, then we need to go, what are we at now? So we have centimeters and centimeters millimeters squared millimeters squared so we have kilograms per meter per second it looks like and so that is a pascal is a kilogram uh, second squared sorry so that should give it to us in in pascals and that comes out to be if you do the numbers 81 pascals so that's an example of how you can um, estimate pressure loss in a pipe if it's laminar flow using ap applying the result that we had to work so hard to get. So that's that'll wrap up this time and then we'll start talking about turbulent flow next time.